Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our 2D character animation tutorial here in Unity. So, last time out we animated a basic little idle animation for our guy, and a basic little run animation. Uh, and what we want to do now is blending between those two things. So what we've got set up here is, I've, I've got a basic little uh, character controller on this guy, so we're able to move him backwards and forwards, and... Um, if we just wait for this to run here, we've got him moving back and forwards, but it, it flips him from side to side, but obviously he's stuck in an idle animation. If we, if we want to test out how his walk animation looks like, uh, very straightforwardly what we can do is go to window here, animator, we just pop this down here, make sure we click on the player, and we're going to right click on this one and set that as the default layer state, so now he's walking and walking along. We can walk him along. You can see he kind of looks like he's roughly going the right speed for how fast he's walking and stuff like that as well. So that's perfectly fine. But um, there's no transition between the two little things. Um, so what we're going to do, um, I've set this script up to be based off his speed. So he'll change to the run animation. or it, It's grabbing from the script his speed. So if I make a parameter here, called speed uh, and I also want to make a bool called jump just so it knows when he's jumping and stuff and we're going to deal with that also um, and basically what we want to do is when he's going from idle to run is when his if it'll go here yeah if when his speed is greater than say 0.1 and when he goes back from run to idle again his speed is less than 0.1. So it's a pretty basic little script. It's pretty much the exact same as the one I created in our, in our 2D character controller, um, or 2D platformer, sorry, tutorial series. Uh, so if you follow along with that, you'd be pretty familiar with it. Otherwise, I'll put a link to the super basic character controller script down below the video. So you can just, to uh, make it nice and straightforward for all you awesome people out there. So, uh, basically, what this will say, it'll go from idle to run to pace depending on his speed. So now if we hit play again, we should be able to... Okay, he's he's idling, um, and he's going to go to run once he gets up enough speed. And as you can see, there's a bit of a delay between those two things. And that's because of the way Unity han handles its animations. So if we unplay this again, what we see here, uh, we're actually going to make idle our, our layer default state because obviously he's starting off not moving. Uh, so the next thing he does is go to run when there's some movement going on. So here we have has exit time. And basically what that does is it creates a bit of a delay before uh, our run animation starts up. Uh, which isn't really what we want here. Um, so we're actually going, we're going to turn off our exit time, uh, but we still have this thing called a transition duration. And what that does is, as you can see, it's set to 0.25, so that's roughly a quarter of a second. And basically what that does is it blends between the idle animation and the walking animation. And it'll do that over a quarter of a second. So if we leave that as it is there now, if we hit play, And he's in his little idle animation, just like that. And as soon as we start walking, his arms go into the right position. So our, as, as we discussed in the previous episode, if we go back in here, our walk on our, our run animation even, uh, the very first frame of that, his arm is all the way up there. So what the animator system within Unity does that's really, really helpful is rather than you just going popping straight up to being up there, it goes, okay, so where should the, where is the arm right now and where should it be? So if we have him there, the arm will it'll go to the frame of animation. It's actually going straight to the... It's going backwards. But that's because what it's doing, because we have a point, uh, a quarter of a second delay, a quarter of a second in our run animation has the arm all the way back there. So what it's going is, okay... We're blending the two things together, so it's going to the, 20, to the quarter of a second mark here, and it's moving the arm to there. And it continues the animations and stuff like that. 
Uh, and what we have because we haven't changed on the opposite one that goes from run back to idle because we left the exit animation or the exit time on that what hap what we're seeing is when we play the game uh once it starts up here so we have our our just our guy standing there and he goes really quickly to walking but if we stop moving it takes a little extra second he keeps walking just like that so if we turn off that exit time and then go back to here you can see what it looks more like now that we turn off the exit time is his legs are just going back into what standing position he doesn't look like he's trying to walk a bit more so if we turn it back on again see it looks like he keeps walking for a little second after he stops that's not good turn it off now it looks like his legs are just going back perfectly in position and that's one of the really really awesome things about the unity animation stuff once you have it set up this way uh, with a nice little skeleton system going on like that uh, so you don't have to worry about how to go from an idle animation to a running animation it just goes okay we can work that out automatically because we know which direction each little element of the body should be in uh, and as another example of this uh, another very handy way to show that is by doing a jump animation and our jump animation is going to be the most straightforward part of everything that we've done here. So basically all we're going to do is go here, we're going to create a new clip. We'll call it jump, jump like that. Save that. And essentially all we have to do for our jump animation is set up the first frame. So we go here, we'll uh, have our body position is fine we want to go for our left leg we're going to rotate that up to this being like this pull that leg down there and his foot like that say and then his right leg we're going to pull it back see just a little bit more forward than that his right leg pull this bit back like that and then his foot pointing down and his arms we're just just going to this guy here like this and out and then his left arm we'll have it up in the air like that and the lower part up like that and that's essentially all we have to do for our jump animation but because of the way that unity handles uh, blending between the two different states it'll automatically move his legs into that position from whatever way our, our uh, stuff is so in our animator here we're gonna grab our jump and we're gonna go from our running oh no not set as default like that uh, make transition from run to jump and because we have a jump parameter here we're going to go speed change that to jump so our conditions so when jump is true that means our jumping animation should happen uh, and likewise we have to go back from that so when jumping is no longer true so jump actually no we won't we'll get rid of that one uh, we go from our idle to jump so when idle so if you're just standing still and the jump becomes true then it goes to jump but if we're in the air um, we're no longer jumping basically we'll go back to idle and then idle will say okay if uh, the character is moving too fast actually no no we'll, we'll do both of them so we'll say uh, jump is false here then we we'll go back to idle uh, but we'll add an extra parameter onto it so we'll say if speed is less than 0.1 then we'll go to idle but we go here if jump jump is false and speed is greater than uh, 0.1 then it will go automatically to running so now now that we've got this set up unity will automatically work out where all the bits and pieces of limbs should go so if you press play here once it runs for us so and remember we've only set up one frame of animation <laughs> oh uh what's going on here he's automatically going to his jump animation jump is true jump is true 
Why is my jump being detected as true all the time? So my player, I've got this up to default. Ground check, ground distance. Ah, because I created this ground checked object and I didn't put it at the ground for my player. So a ground check object, basically on the little script I created was like, the ground. this little thing is detecting where the ground is, which should be at the bottom of the player's feet, of course. And we have a little radius where it's checking, which is a distance of 0.1 from the player to the ground to find out if we're on the ground. And we're che checking what layer is the ground as well. So our, our little bit of ground that we have here is on the default layer. So therefore we're looking for objects on the default layer so that we know we're on the ground. It's basically what's going on there. Like I said, it's a very simple, straightforward script, but you have to remember to put things in the right place. So now, there we go, he's, sitting, he's standing still. He's walking along just like that, just perfect. And now if we jump, his arms, legs will go up just like that. Although we've got the same problem we had on our walk, on our running and idling. Uh, if this was allow me to move them. There we go. Uh, I don't think I ever fixed this when we weren't running it. No, I did. Uh, so here we want to turn off our exit time on all of these things. And by default, they all have a 0.25 transition duration. So that's perfectly fine for, for our needs. Actually, what we should probably do is when we land, when we come from our jump back to idle, we probably want to shorten that down because obviously you move very quickly those things although that's set to point one already for us perfect okay well that just happened to be set to the right thing but that's okay um okay so now if we press play this time what we should get is when we jump in the air immediately he'll move to having his legs in the right kind of position so now we go boo like that and he puts them back as we land on the ground perfect and going from walking, so his legs there, you can see they're moving, depending on which, so if we just watch this this leg here, for example. So if we jump when it's at the front, it goes swinging back. Um, let me just go back over here again. And if we jump when it's at the back, it just kind of stays roughly in the same position. So it's perfect, this is exactly what we wanted to do, and then his arms go in the right position. And we didn't do anything. We just set up one frame of animation of basically where the body should be. And then Unity just goes ahead and works it all out for us. So that's kind of the basic way to use animations in Unity and to make it all, take advantage of the systems built into Unity to make things work nicely. It's one of the advantages of using a, a multiple piece character like this, as opposed to just using a sprite sheets or something like that. With a sprite sheet, you can't possibly do this. You can only transition straight away to a new animation. You you could go and hand draw the movements in between, but there's no way you could know that a person is going to jump when the player has his leg at the front, for example, or has the leg all the way stretched out straight. There's no way you can know that. So that's why stuff like that doesn't happen in uh, sort of pixel art based uh, sprite animation based games. But that's an advantage to be taken of within Unity. So there you go. That's the basics of how to animate a character. Hopefully you found this little three episode series helpful and you can use that and put it to use in your own games for making characters run and jump around all over the place. So thanks for watching and I will return soon with more tutorial goodness. Thanks for checking out this episode and if you want even more Games Plus James goodness, make sure you hit those subscribe and like buttons. You can also find me on Twitter and Facebook by following the links on screen where you can find out all the latest news about the channel. And if you want to help support the show, check out the Patreon page where you can get exclusive content in return for helping make the channel even better. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.